Most of the setups I get myself into involve a catfish of some kind. But when it comes to setting up for maybe like a solo performance or an acoustic duo, I just kind of wanted to show you uh, the stuff that you might need, the stuff that I use, and kind of just share some tips that I have learned along the way of uh, doing different shows. So basically this is kind of everything that I feel I need for most of the stuff I do. Uh, it breaks down pretty easy and we're just really gonna get to it and I'm gonna kind of set it up just so you can kind of see uh, what goes along to it. So basically, first things first, music stand. Definitely need this, uh, which we're gonna talk about later, but I kind of want to go through the bag right now, okay? So really, we got a lot of junk in this backpack right here. First of all, we've got a mixer. Now, do you need a mixer? It really just depends on your PA system and how many channels, how many tracks you need to have going. Now, for what I do, I generally uh, need at least three at any one time. Uh, I've got this Yamaha MG10XU mixer. I think it's really great. It has a lot of features. Uh, I can answer questions on this if you guys have them. But uh, anyways, all of my microphones, anything that is gonna run through the PA goes through the Yamaha mixer. And to run this, you need like a power supply. So really for most of the stuff, for all this gear, I only need two outlets. I've got the power supply for the mixer and the power supply for the PA, which I kind of keep in a separate, uh, separate pocket in this bag, along with the microphone that I use. Now, uh, I'm just gonna do this uh, as a setup for one thing, but basically the main dynamic live mic I use is an Audix OM5. Uh, really solid microphone, has a tight pickup pattern, so it won't pick up a lot of external noise because depending on the venue that you're playing in, there might be kind of some noise that you don't want amplified. Now this is key, even though I only need two outlets, you kind of need a power strip because you really don't know what else might be going on in the venue that you're playing. Now, another really smart thing to bring with you is an extension cord. I don't have one in this bag because I know I don't need one because I know exactly where I'm setting up. It's kind of like an ideal thing for power, but power can be one of the biggest obstacles in playing like live shows, just kind of getting the right power, getting enough power, making sure you're not gonna blow any circuits. Now this setup right here doesn't really require a lot of power to be drawn. And again, this is just like an acoustic thing. Then maybe we're looking at tops 150 people, but uh, definitely it, it sounds great from like, you know, 20 people on up. Uh, and then we've got this kind of poorly constructed mess of cables, okay? So what I have here, I have XLR cables and quarter inch instrument cables. Now the XLR cables are for the microphones and to connect the mixer to the PA. All I need an instrument cable for is going direct in from the guitar, which we're gonna look at in a second too. But something that I can't stress enough is to, have, is to make sure you have more cables than you need because you never know when a cable is gonna go bad. So I always have at least one backup instrument cable and because, I mean, you've probably even experienced it. Like a lot of guitar players, sometimes a cable just break or it'll start going out and like you kind of have to finick with it and it just uh, starts dying. Nothing worse than being in a live performance and then you kind of like run out of what you need cable wise, okay? So I always carry at least one extra XLR, one extra quarter inch cable, even if I don't need that much. And then last but not least in the pack is an iPad, some kind of tablet, these are invaluable because, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the gigs I play, we have to do like 60, 70 songs. It's good just to have a cheat sheet of the chords to kind of remember some of the ones that maybe you haven't got down because I'm a big fan of trying to incorporate as many new things as possible to keep playing live fresh and interesting for whatever you're doing. Uh, also too, uh, it's easier to take requests if you have an iPad or you're able to look it up on your phone in a way that you can actually see it while you're playing. So definitely an iPad, some kind of tablet is a must. So right now we're gonna to get to the PA system and this is a Bose L1 Compact, which I've had for a long, I've had this thing for like six years and it's actually like pretty awesome. Uh, the cool thing is it breaks down super small. It's got some extra pockets here for like the carrying case. Again, I've got an extra XLR in here and I have an eighth inch auxiliary jack that you can use to like if you're taking a break or something. You can kind of just like pump anything off like Spotify or anything on your phone unless you have a new iPhone in which case you need an adapter. Come on Apple, it's messed up. But the beautiful thing about this PA specifically is it breaks down super super easy. And they have like other ones now that kind of do the same thing. But again, I like Bose. 
I think it sounds pretty good. You just have these, uh, you turn this into a tower. So uh, the sub is actually the base and the tweeter kind of just like slips in like that. And then you can take these like extensions to kind of make as tall or small as you want. So again, depending on the venue, you can actually just have it as, as small as this or just kind of like how it was when I first set it up. But most of the time you kind of want to use the whole thing because it just get, it covers a lot more spread when you're doing it. So basically once you plug this in, this is set up. And uh, for, a lot of, for a lot of stuff, what you can do is there's actually a microphone in and a guitar in built into this, so you might not even need a mixer. But again, for what I do, I definitely need a mixer because I usually don't do it solo. I usually do it with one other person. Which brings us to the stands, of which I have two. Now these are boom microphone stands. And again, I've got two of them because I can't perform solo. So much of what I do depends on me being mentally ready to make jokes <laughs> or just kind of chat with people. So the second person in the duo needs to be able to carry some of the heavy lifting, but I'm gonna set this up as one thing. Now a boom stand is basically just a stand that has an arm that you can kind of extend to whatever you need. Now I think it's really, really important to have a boom stand. You might, uh, you might be, uh, tempted to just get like a straight up and down stand like this because they're cheaper but honestly if you're doing live you kind of want a boom because you never really know how you're going to be sitting how you're going to be standing you kind of need to be able to angle it in a certain direction <clears throat> so i usually set them up without the microphones and then you have like the microphone kind of clip on here but you can just do that slam that audix om5 into it so that is ready to go Again, I'm not really gonna, I mean, the nice thing about these music stands is they're like semi-cheap. I think you can get them for like between 20 and $30. And uh, really invaluable if you're using like an iPad or something like that to just kind of keep there. Or even maybe like a drink menu or something that you can just kind of read off of this. So this breaks down. Usually you get it, usually you can break it because of course I only get the finest quality things. Now, boom stand wise, I do recommend Kind of splurging on getting a nice boom stand because stands break really easily if you're gigging around a lot. These are the DR Pro ones, which I think they're actually like, I think they're actually like 60 bucks, which I mean, they might even be like $70. But I'm so happy that I splurged on getting a decent boom stand because it makes all the difference. Like the cheap $25, $30 ones you see at Guitar Center or wherever else, I promise you those will break on you. I promise you that's gonna happen. All right, so we got all this. Now, again, depending on what kind of gig it is, other things you might need would be like a, like a little table or a chair or something like that. Uh, I generally am famously known for ghetto rigging absolutely everything I do. So I'll find anything that I can stack this mixer on, whether it's like, a pile of phone books, whether I just have it on my knee when I'm playing, whatever it takes. Again, I'm just using this kind of chair here. Usually a venue will have something that you can use, but you don't want to depend on that. You kind of want to have all that set up ahead of time. So basically, I'm just gonna kind of set all this stuff up real quick, and then I'll get into what I'm plugging in. But really, it's not that difficult of a setup. So power strip. I've got the power here for the mixer. Again, my cable management skills are legendary in and of itself. Got that. Plug this one in here. Again, don't turn anything on just yet. And then really positioning this stuff too to kind of like help with feedback could be like a whole other video because if you're super close, if you're sitting right in front of the PA, most likely you're gonna get a lot of feedback in a live situation. So sometimes that'll take a little bit more experimenting into kind of what you're gonna end up doing eventually. So let me get this iPad out of the way. And then again, start untangling some of this nonsense, which you can tell I some people do the thing where they like, they take a lot of time to really carefully and individually wrap their cables up after a show. Usually what I do is I'm out of there as quick as possible. So I jam everything into the backpack 
and hit the road. So this one is the XLR cable that is going from the left stereo out, which this isn't a stereo setup, it's just mono. So usually the left channel is like the mono one out that you get, and this just plugs in right to the PA. So now I've connected the PA system to the mixer. So all I really need to do now is take an instrument cable, get this ready for the guitar. Usually I kind of have, how do I have this set up right now? I guess the guitar is going to be channel one into here. Eventually this is going to go into the Martin, which you're going to see in a second. And then I have this other XLR cable going into channel two, like so. And then usually, you know, you can set it up right now. So essentially most of the connections are ready as needed. <coughs> Another thing you might want to bring with you, depending again on the venue, is a guitar stand because, uh, you know, if you're taking breaks, sometimes you can always just put your guitar in the case, take it in and out, stuff like that. Other times you might want to get one of those little A-frame stands, you can kind of just rest something in. But now we're going to take the guitar out. So this is a Martin GPC PA4, my favorite named guitar in the business. So really what's in your case is also pretty important. Uh, again, I've just got the guitar here, it has a built-in tuner, and I have a capo. Now there's a strap there, I'm going to use set it up with a chair, uh, but yeah, you always want to have a strap in your case because you never really know. And then in the compartment here, I've got a backup tuner, string winder, set of strings, and an extra 9 volt battery. If you're going acoustic electric, uh, sometimes, some systems will let you know when the battery is close to dying, others do not. I'm super paranoid about that, so I kind of always just have an extra 9 volt battery chilling in there. All right, so everything is connected, I'm not turning anything on yet, but what you can do is you can turn your mixer on. You always want to turn your mixer on before the PA, otherwise you're going to get like a huge pop kind of going on. All right, so I'm going to set this up right here. Again, if I'm going to sit close enough to the mixer where I can control what's going on, I want this PA away from me. So I'm going to move this to the side, and honestly, if you can kind of sit behind it a little bit and you can still monitor yourself, that's really kind of ideal. So I'm going to put it to the side. It's going to be pretty low volume for what I'm doing here. But again, the more volume you need, the more you have to think about where your PA system is as far as the feedback and stuff goes. <coughs> All right, so as soon as I get this guitar plugged in, which is right here, and again, as you notice, I'm threading cables under and around different things because I'm a true G and I don't think ahead. And all of this will, will become a problem <laughs> in a lab situation <laughs> as soon as I start tripping over things, right? So we're just going to assume this is in tune, everything's tuned up. Basically, all of my levels, my volume levels on the mixer are down right now, which is important because, again, you don't want anything to just like kind of surprise you when you turn the PA on. So again, my main stereo knob is down. So there shouldn't be any sound coming out of this mixer yet. Now, once I pop the PA on, you can kind of hear a little bit of static. It's really pretty silent for the most part. I'll turn it down a little bit. But now you can start kind of like getting your levels right and kind of gain staging for certain things. Now, even though I did just kind of jam this into a backpack, Usually the knobs stay pretty well as they're set, so I can kind of just start bringing that volume up right now. So, that kind of sounds alright. Uh, I've got a little bit of reverb or delay or something on there. And then I can kind of figure out what's going on here. You can check it. Now again, as you can tell, up here, I'm not really getting a lot of signal because of the pickup pattern of this particular microphone. So, the sooner I get into it, the more you can kind of hear it. So, uh, eventually you're gonna wanna kind of balance your levels out like this. But, I mean, that's pretty, like I'm pretty good to kind of get going right now. I don't even know what kind of effect I have going on here. I'm not really sure what was happening the last time I had this going, but, Right now, I am good to go. I'm good to go to play a solo gig and uh, just start rocking it out.
so basically, if you have any questions or comments of maybe questions on uh, any of the gear that you see here, maybe some comments on anything that, you know, maybe some gear that maybe you use and you like to use, you want to kind of help other people out and just share your expertise, let the comments be a message board for any aspiring gigging musician. Because as soon as you... It's really like a confidence inspiring thing. Like a lot of people are kind of like shy when they first maybe want to start doing something. But my advice, as soon as you make yourself go do something, whether it's an open mic night, whether it's something like that, it's just all great experience, you know? And it'll just make you a better player. Uh, and uh, you know, just kind of maybe over time, you don't need all this stuff right away. Over time, build up a mobile gig and eventually you can just start getting the show on the road. So thanks a lot for checking everything out. And if you have any questions or comments, Hit me up. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.